everyone. This is Marcy with Creators Call Shop here on YouTube and Creators Call on Etsy. And today I'm continuing in my series called Currently Creating. We are working on three fall journals. So in my last video, I was showing you how I reinforce the holes and things. And today I'm going to be dividing these pages up into the sections that I am going to refer to as signatures. Um, they're not true signatures in the sense that I folded everything together, but that they are, I am creating sections within the binder that seem logical. And I'm just going to show you how I'm thinking through that. If there's time at the end, then we'll just see where the creative process takes us and what we want to work on. But first, get yourself your drink, get yourself comfy, find a comfy chair, and meet me right back here at the craft table after this. <laughs> All right, let's dig into it. First thing I wanted to show you was this little piece that we didn't have time to finish last time. So I went ahead and added one of those decorative strips to it and just glued it more or less as an extension. And then I found some of this trim here, this really pretty ribbon that I had in my stash. So I've added that and I think that'll be really cute. So let's go ahead and figure out how we want to divide these pages up so that they make sense within the journal. So remembering that I am working with September, October, and November as my themes. So each one of those will be a section or a signature in this journal. And let me start by taking this page out because I don't really know exactly where I want it yet. It's interesting and, and we'll figure out later what we want to do with it. So I'm going to set that aside for now. So here are the three sections that are already in the binder. Now these have the calendar within, so it's a two page spread. So I want to keep that intact for each one of these. But in between, we have a pretty section and then Let's move these over a little bit. Then we also have the three tabbed pages from the other binder that we want to incorporate. So let's bring them in and see what we want to do. And I just realized that I'm not supposed to be talking. So <laughs> I'm not supposed to be talking through this. I was going to do the voiceover. So from this point forward, I will speed up the video and explain to you what it is that I'm doing. I'm starting with the three pages that I removed from the other ring binder. And since they are single pages, they make a nice back page to each section and the patterns and colors match very nicely what's already in this binder. This November page, I had cut a little slit right there where the hole was, but the whole reinforcer covered it over. I had to recut that. Now it opens and shuts over the ring. Setting the binder aside for now, I will be dividing into three piles. Starting with these pages, each one of those has a folded flap, either from the side or up from the bottom. Specialty items like the photo sleeve, wallpaper, and the plastic piece. It's almost like a vellum. It's kind of cool. They each get their own little pile. And now the October afternoon pages. I'm trying to make a little more space on my desk there because I'm feeling crowded. There we go. And these I just kind of pick at random depending on what seemed like it looked good in each spot. That one's an oddball. He gets set aside for now with that other tabbed page. We may have something we can do with them together later. We'll see. Now the recipe pages that we had altered with the holes. And then the ideals pages. They're so bright and colorful. I have five, so I pull in another colorful, 
colorful page from an artist's workbook. Now I've got the lined paper. There happen to be six, so that's nice because they divide up evenly. I'm going to be picking up a workbook page here, and I had set aside a couple earlier. I didn't know what to do with them, so that makes a nice uh, arrangement, one in each pile. Now those children's books, they, that was an individual story, so there's one in each section from that book. And more lined pages. I have quite an assortment, so I just divide them up at random, whatever feels good. The last pile is going to get two because I had an oddball number. And then these are those cardstock weight pages from the binder. And again, I'm just going to stick one in each pile and set the extra one aside until we decide what to do with it. Now the CD photo sleeves. It's nice when they're in groupings of three and it matches how many signatures you have. That makes it a little bit easier. If not, I just try to make logical groupings. This is an art paper like children's drawing paper, so some of those go in each pile. Next up are the dictionary pages from the children's dictionary. I kind of use these later as sort of how to theme each signature, although that's not necessary. I set aside the pages for that one story that we're going to use to tie the whole book together, and now I'm dividing up the other children's book or storybook pages. Just whatever seems good. I try to, I'm trying to keep like the sizes of the pages together, the themes of the pages uh, dispersed. These two pages here with the pumpkin pie recipe, since it's a recipe, I'm adding them to one section and then adding those other two recipes we had set aside to another section. I think at the end I wind up with an extra page that I'm not sure what to do with, so we, we wind up setting that one aside too. Trying to put pumpkins with pumpkins, corn with corn, scarecrow with scarecrow, although that's not necessary, but it's just a way to make it, to just to divide things up that's logical to me. It doesn't have to, it's not cut in stone, and whatever makes sense to you is how you can do it when you're dividing out your pages. That page there with the farm, I definitely wanted in the first signature because the boys are going to a farm, and so I wanted that at the beginning. I really liked that one little image there with the guy, with the little guy with his pumpkins. Now I've got Mr. Pumpkinhead and the windmill and the other page with the gourds. So I put Mr. Pumpkinhead at the beginning too because they're going to the pumpkin patch. And then that page in my left hand is another page with pumpkin head, so I put it in a different signature. And now I just have like random pages that are more print or brown and white kind of neutral. So I divide those up. Now I'm on to some smaller scrapbook pages here. And again, I'm just putting one orange in each pile, one green in each pile, one yellow in each pile, just as it kind of makes sense to me. These two, I only have two, so I just I'm trying to see if there's anything that kind of matches them. I set them aside for a minute. And then these three pieces all have pumpkins on them. So that each one goes in a section. Those two are plaids and then another one that's plaid-ish. <laughs> a lot of those are kind of smaller ones. So I'm trying to look for the bigger pieces now. and I do some shuffling. I decided to put that really bold plaid in the middle pile so it didn't clash with the pages in the other signature. And I do have a lot of orange, so everybody gets quite a few orange pages. So there's a green, a green, and I don't have another green, so I end up, I think I just picked that one at random. Yeah, I do. Now I'm picking out the ones that are kind of have a neutral base. Now the ones that have blue. There we go. I've got lots of stripes, lots of blue. 
that one I definitely want at the very beginning so I'm setting it on top of the first signature but it will go in the very beginning and then this pile of random pages I'm just trying to figure out how I want to divide those up I am going to move those around a little bit later I'll see that for now I just don't know what to do with that brown index page so I wait now I'm dividing uh, the pages from the storybook and trying to just make little breaks where it would look logical to make a break in the story so that I can divide them between the three sections. Yep, still don't know what to do with him. <laughs> can I just keep waiting on it? I really, I, I'm not sure. Sometimes you just have to wait for the inspiration to strike. Now, okay, the one on the left is going to be signature one. It's now in the middle and I set signature two aside. So I'm going to work from this pile in the middle to put into my first signature. And in a second here, <laughs> you're going to see what happens. Yes, I grab from signature two. <laughs> I start putting in the pages into signature one and I realize it about halfway through. For now, those, those random pages that I wasn't quite sure what to do with, I thought I would put them at the very beginning of the journal. Uh, not in any signature, but it's kind of like an introductory pages. And now I'm trying to find papers. I'm, I'm dividing out all of the scrapbook papers because I'm going to try to figure out which one looks best next to that calendar page and the, and the patterns on it. So I've got all of these and then I kind of have, I kind of arrange them by size a little bit because I like to do the overlapping. I start with the bigger ones and then start working down. So which one of these is going to look good next to that page? There's a possibility there. You just try each one out a little bit. Okay, orange is making the cut. And then as you would be leafing through, what is going to look pleasing to the eye? That's just kind of how I do it. Now, of course, as you continue to add more pages in, it's going to build on itself. So the initial the initial division of pages and things is a good place to start but then it just changes as you continue to add different types of papers so now i'm wanting to create that layered effect and i think those pumpkins would look good on layering on top of the orange that has one of those uh, chevron kind of patterns and then i decided let's put it together with the burgundy let's lay this one in here but now we have a lot of white on white which we'll go back and fix later and then here, that one has a real narrow stripe, but it's kind of a blue on blue, so I didn't want to put stripe with stripe. So that smaller blue goes there. I put the yellow plaid on top with it. I'm doing stripes with plaid, I know. But we go with it for now. Oh, no we don't. Now we change our mind. <laughs> for now, that lays right there. And then I like how that peeks out between the two blue pages and kind of breaks up the blue and breaks up the patterns a little bit. So these few extra pages that were oddball are going to be going up here in the very front. And I like how that green looks against the polka dots. Now I pick out, I think the next batch of papers I pick out are the book pages. First I have this flap this one that has the folded in flap and I'm trying to figure out where I would like it to go in this signature. So as you can see I just lay it down and then I kind of lay the other pages over it to see how it might line up. So far nothing really strikes my fancy. So I put it at the very end and then kind of working back to front how do I want the pages to lay. I just kind of go backwards and forwards a lot. You will see that. I flip through a lot. At a, at a certain point it all starts to kind of make sense and flow together. So now I'm just trying to find all of the book pages, storybook pages, and I think the ideals pages. cute right there. I just got some color with color and now we have that one and I just love that little boy. He looks so cute against that plaid. So he stays there. 
this one for now is going to go there. I decided it needs some extra reinforcing. And I put on some blue ones. I think to go with that blue paper it's next to. I'm not sure I had a real plan there. I just put some in there, put some on. Now the windmill page looks good there. Now I've got a lot of color going on right here. So I'm gonna break it up with the book page. So basically where you have a lot of color, you can add neutral or plainer pages and where there's a lot of plain pages, add color. That's just kind of how I assess each page. I like that there, but he it's gonna move in a minute. Thinking, deliberating. Yep, it's gonna go up to the front. And then the little caption there about fall is in the air, I thought would be a great title or a beginning line for the book. It's fall and with the theme. Now I like that the today and the list go very nicely with the list on the left-hand page. I'm going to do some deliberating here on where to put these two pieces. And that one gets put right there for now. It doesn't really have a good spot, but I do like kind of how it looks layered over that over that page there. So now recipe, recipe, those are small and square. The other one's longer. And where would be a good place for my two-page recipe? I like the little girl holding her pie up against the fall and leaf all the words on that page there and the colors, they look good together. Now we're going with some of the plainer pages. And I have a couple of those ideal pages too, so I've gotta find a place for them. Dictionary page winds up right there. And again, looking at how all the pages layer on top of each other, I like how that looks there. Adding some bright bit of color, and because it's a two-sided two page, it looks it's nice to have the color and pattern on both sides. And then this, I just decided, no, it needs something there. So I put the trees. Then I look at my little girl lined up against it. I like it. Now I'm looking for a home for this page. It's so neutral that next to another neutral, it kind of washes out everything. And next, it just needs to find the right spot where it doesn't look too busy or too plain. Now an image like that, I can turn it either direction and because it had images on both sides, I can pretty much line that up in the book any way I want, but I'm really wanting the pumpkin side to show. Now I have plain with plain again. So now I'm grabbing all the lined pages. Some of those are very colorful and have color on two sides, so that's useful for breaking up where, it's, where you've got two plainer pages together. it's too busy or what have you. This one I I kind of move around quite a bit because I'm not exactly sure where I want it. And as I go through trying to figure out where I want that paper, I lay in some of the other pages. I also like how the blue and the yellow layer together. Then I decide it looks better with that plastic piece over it. And I'm gonna tell you that at the end of this, after I'm done filming, I actually end up taking that piece out. <laughs> so it winds up not making it in there anyway. Now I'm looking at how that green on the paper looks with the green in the picture, but it, the pattern showing through it is too bold. So I lay it with the brown under it. And I really like that. For some reason, it just seems to work. So we do that, even though I have two writing spaces next to each other. Blue's gonna go in there for now. And 
more rearranging. And like I said, you know, the pages move around a bit just depending on how it looks as you add each group of pages. So I, I've got, I started with the scrapbook pages, then I added the book pages, then I added the planer pages or pages with writing, and then I added the, the lined sheets. So after this, it's just kind of deciding, do I really like that or not? I'm gonna turn over that striped page. See how that lays together nicely? But there's kind of a lot of plain. Yep, there we go. Now we're moving it around. So those two hide behind the green. I still have the green laying on top of the page with the leaves, but then the other two are hiding in between, which gives your journal interest. And now I'm trying to figure out where to put those book pages. And this is the point where I realize, oh, I just put all of the pages from signature two into signature one. Oops. <laughs> so now I'm just gonna go through and figure out where those would look cute and still have the story make sense because it's going in order. I'm gonna tell you too, that yellow plaid moves eventually and I end up turning that gray page around so that it li lines up with the page before it and it actually turns out looking better. But you don't see that because that winds up being off camera. There we go, our little kiddos. That's kind of like a raincoat, the plastic of the raincoat going over their raincoats. And now we're on to signature two. I'm moving signature three completely out of the way so I don't do that mistake again. <laughs> And now, since I knew the order that I put the other pages in, now I'm dividing this pile kind of into that order so I can just grab each, each pile and put them in in the same, same general progression of pages. It just made it a little bit easier. Any way that you can think of to organize and to uh, have somewhat, some kind of a process is always very helpful as you're putting this together, especially in these ring binders, because sometimes it's a little bit harder to see how the pages are going to flow together in a ring binder than it is when you fold all your signatures together. Or at least it's like that for me for some reason. I don't know why. I'm spending a lot of time shuffling papers here. Okay. Looks like we're at the end. Oops. There's an extra book page that escaped. So again, starting with the scrapbook papers and I I knew I liked that flapped page at the very end of the signature last time, but I don't think I'm gonna like it there this time. But I'm trying to figure out which page is gonna look nice lined up against the one on the left in terms of color and pattern and design. And the green one makes the cut. And then I'm gonna do a similar thing again where I layer the pages up against that page against the calendar page there on top of the green and kind of make a layering progression similar to what I did in the first signature. I hope that made sense the way I said that. And I'm just trying to see who looks good with who in terms of layering. It Hopefully by just moving the papers around here it eliminates some of the flipping back and forth in the binder. Seems like it would save time. I don't know if it does. <laughs> and again, nothing is ever in stone, so you just lay them in there and I'm, I'm seeing how it looks. But then things will get moved around a little bit and that's okay. This is just, it's kind of like writing a term paper. You have your first draft and your second draft and your final draft. <laughs> this is a very rough first draft. I like how those three look together. It looks really nice especially with that one with the leaves. That's a really pretty paper. No, no weird stripes with stripes. That was a no, no, no. The blue is good though. And then that orange, because it's so big and bold, that seems to work. I like that page at the very back because it is two-sided and those whimsical cartoony kind of clouds work really well for this journal. I don't have a lot of places where I can use that paper because of those clouds, so it's nice to have a good spot for them. Now we're adding in some of the plainer pages. So there goes the dictionary page. And then the other one there is a children's practice page, like manuscript page. And then here's the corn. 
acorn recipe and the ideals book pages. And then I'm just laying this in different places to see how it looks. Just a pumpkin head. Nope. <laughs> Now I'm looking at this page trying to figure out where it goes and then I realize it says Thanksgiving so I really should put it in the section for November because that's when Thanksgiving is so it moves to the back and then later I'll just snag a page from the other third stack of papers to replace that page I just moved. Here's that photo sleeve. I kind of like it right there so there it's going to stay. And then having that smaller page there, again, from the October afternoon pages, it just seems to work. Now, I'm, yep, you can kind of see how the different colors and the different patterns layer on top of each other there. Still looking for a home for that manuscript page. On one side it has, it's got all the months of the year where the kids trace it, so the back side has the September, October, November progression on it. Mr. Pumpkinhead is going to live there now, and manuscript page goes there on either side of the orange polka dots. Now, where would I like him to be? I don't know. So we're going to go on to the children's book pages. And then I separate out the children's story and set it aside so I can keep track of it. Now, because I knew that I wanted that page in the front. Is that? Yeah. I knew I wanted that in the first signature, so I just put that back in the first signature, and then I'm going to find a page to exchange it with that works. That would go in the second signature. And that is the best choice. So he's going to be moved to the second signature now, so that my numbers are about the same in each signature, you know, the number of pages. Flipping through to see if that one has a good spot. Oh, I'm moving Mr. Pumpkinhead and then storybook page goes there now instead. Now I like that lined up against the orange. Okay, that's good. Flipping through. I put that one there for now, but I'm going to tell you, because I don't think you see this at the end, it actually is going to wind up going next to the clouds, that book page. So still trying to figure out where things should lay. There we go. That looks cute there. There's the scarecrow. I like it next to that blue paper because the cross hatches kind of look like maybe the patches on the scarecrow's jacket. So they go next to each other. Again, I like how that page layers together. Put in the writing page and then that makes it just plain enough to add in that book page there as well. And I'm folding it over to fit, but now it adds some color and interest. And now moving on to more of the lined pages. Seems like a lot of yellow on yellow. I think I move one of those later. Don't quote me. <laughs> I can't remember what I do. There we go. That looks nice with the brown under there. Okay, I'm going to stop here because my timer is about to run out. So you can kind of get the idea of what we what we were doing, and I still have the third signature to do. I don't know if you noticed or not. I figured it out halfway through. You guys probably figured it out right at the beginning, but I got what I was gonna, the pages I was gonna put in signature one. I mixed them up with what I was gonna put in signature two. But you know, I think it still works out. It still, <laughs> that's, that's what's so great about a junk journal, right? Really no mistake you cannot fix or just work around or ignore. So anyhow, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this on my own time. Before we end, let me read to you very quickly from 
a token of friendship again. And this one, of course, is talking about friendship and what is important in a friendship. It says, guard within yourself that treasure, kindness. Know how to give without hesitation, how to lose without regret, how to acquire without meanness. Know how to replace in your heart by the happiness of those you love, the happiness that may be wanting to yourself. That's really sweet. And then this one here, love must be learned and learned again and again. There is no end to it. That is so true. All right, friends, until next time, I wish you well and lots of happy, creative, fun, crafty time. So until we meet back here at the craft table, be inspired and do something creative today. Bye-bye now. See you in the next video.